What's up? What's going on? Voodoo Five Twelve Ninety Two here with you, and today we are going to be doing another of my honest and thorough game reviews. And this review actually will be the last review I do for a game released in 2011. With completing this game, I'm now officially done all of the games that I will be doing footage of that came out in 2011. And uh, so there's some sense of finality in this for me. But uh, the game that will be under the microscope today is a game that really got enormous critical acclaim both from gamers and critics alike when it was released in August of, uh, excuse me, of October of 2011. And many people really blew the game up and said that, you know, it was game of the year for 2011 and a lot of people actually thought that it deserved to jump every other game in 2011 and be the game of the year. And so uh, the game that we will be taking a look at today is Batman Arkham City by Rocksteady uh, Game Studios. And Batman Arkham City is of course the sequel to the also critically acclaimed Batman Arkham Asylum which was released in 2009. Uh, now before we continue with this review I just want to mention that I, I did not actually play Batman Arkham Asylum myself but I've seen a good amount of gameplay of the game through my friends playing the game and other gameplay so I am somewhat familiar with Batman Arkham Asylum even though I did not actually play the game myself. Um, but it is the sequel to Batman Arkham Asylum and basically to set the scene for Batman Arkham City basically when all these prisoners and everything uh, escaped Arkham Asylum they pretty much took over or began to take over Gotham City and many of uh, Batman's most famous you know, supervillains uh, also invaded Gotham City and basically are wreaking havoc on it and terrorizing the citizens of Gotham City. And basically the higher-ups in Gotham City said, listen, we can't control this. We can't contain these amount of, you know, this amount of prisoners and all these villains running around and it's chaos. So what they actually decided to do is they actually decide to section off and quarantine an area of Gotham City and rename it Arkham City. And uh, basically, at the beginning of the game, <clears throat> for one reason or another, Bruce Wayne is arrested and actually gets thrown into uh, Arkham City. And when he goes into Arkham City, he realizes that it is just absolute and complete chaos. And Basically, there are a few of, of the major villains that are all vying and trying to compete for power within Arkham City. Uh, Hugo Strange is actually the person that is technically in charge of Arkham City uh, to oversee it and keep the prisoners contained within uh, the walls. But there's, there's basically three main Batman villains that are trying to all vie for power within Arkham City. They all have their own gang members. They all fight one another, and it's crazy. You've got Two-Face, you've got Penguin, and, of course, the Joker. And all three of these entities basically are, you know, gaining po gaining power with their respective uh, followers, and their gang members are going around killing the other gang members. They're all vying for power, and it's pretty nuts. But... Those are not the only three villains in this game by far. As you play through Arkham City, you run into just an unbelievable multitude of enemies from the Batman universe. I mean, besides those three that I mentioned, you've uh, got Mr. Freeze, who plays a big part in the game. You have um, Bane is in the game, Victor Zaz. <clears throat> you run into him in the game. There is just Deadshot is in the game. Uh, if you actually buy the DLC and play and, and get to play the Catwoman missions, of course she's in the game and also uh, Poison Ivy, I believe you run into her if you play as Catwoman. And Mad Hatter is in the game, he makes a brief appearance, and there's actually uh, a few more Batman villains that, that kind of make surprise appearances that I wanna, don't want to spoil all of them because there are some pretty cool surprise appearances by some of these, villain, these vil uh, that, villains. Uh, that's just really neat and all of the villains are very very well done I mean the graphics are amazing and each of these supervillains 
Oh, of course the Riddler. The Riddler is in the game. He plays a huge part. How could, how could I forget about him? But all of these villains, I mean, they're exactly what you would imagine them to be in a real world setting. They're not these stupid, goofy villains that you've seen in Batman stuff before, like Arnold Schwarzenegger as Mr. Freeze. There's none of that kind of stuff in there. It's it's all very gritty, very dark, and very realistic as far as when it comes to the enemies in this game. They are, uh, you know, just very, very well done and very awesome looking uh, enemies. And so you run into a multitude of them in the game and it's pretty neat. Now, uh, if you remember from Arkham Asylum, there was this chemical called Titan and basically Joker was in control of this stuff and actually took took some himself and was becoming very sick. Well, in Arkham City, he's still uh, sick, and there is some twists that happen with that plot line between you and the Joker, and um, I don't want to, of course, give anything away, but that's basically the main plot line. Something, there's a twist involving the Joker and this Titan that he's infected with, and basically sets the scene for the game. And if you... I don't, I don't know, lost my train of, thought, train of thought there, but there's also, besides from that, the there's another kind of overarching plot where Hugo Strange, who's in charge of Arkham City, keeps talking about this Protocol 10 that he's going to enact, which no one knows exactly what Protocol 10 is. He just keeps saying it's going to happen in so many hours, and that comes into play later in the game. So the plot is, is really good. It's I would say it's definitely one of the best plots of any game from 2011. It's really well detailed. It's a really driving plot that one that makes you keep wanting to play more to figure out what's going on in the story and what's going to happen to all the different characters and stuff in the game. And uh, extremely good plot line. I just saw some more villains that were in the game. Ra's al Ghul and Talia al Ghul in the League of Assassins uh, are also uh, present in the game. So yeah, there's a lot of enemies in this game. Uh, from Batman. It's pretty cool. So that's basically sets the scene. So now let's talk about the gameplay basically and there is a, a good amount of stuff to talk about here with the gameplay of Arkham City. Um, a lot of the things were kind of taken from Arkham Asylum but a lot of things are new. For instance the fact that this game is much more of a, basically an open world style game and you will have of course a main story quest uh, that you can follow but you'll also have 12 um, unique and individual side mission, major side mission quest lines that you can complete uh, in the game and it's pretty neat. They're 100% optional of course. Most of the side missions do have achievements slash trophies when you complete them and they're worth doing. Uh, so it's pretty neat. There's a lot of uh, a lot of content you know in, in Arkham City uh, to explore and do and there's multiple reasons to do these side quests because just like Arkham Asylum, Arkham City runs off of an, of an XP point system where you earn experience for things like you know knocking out enemies and completing quests and things and as Batman uh, gains experience he will level up and when you level up you can actually pick you know of course upgrade your abilities uh, whether that's to get new gadgets or new abilities for your gadgets um, improve your armor or to basically learn some new combat combos and things like that, special moves you can do in combat. So there's a lot of perks to actually doing the side missions and they're interesting. They're all unique storylines and they're pretty cool to do. So lots of content here. And as far as the combat is concerned, there's basically two elements. There's the straight up combat when you're when you'll be fighting you know, hand-to-hand -hand people, and then the stealth gameplay. And when the combat system in the game is basically like a very fluid, um, it's it's a lot more fluid and more refined than your average beat 'em up game. It's not it's not a button mashing combat system. It's a combat system that you will learn more and more how to do as you play the game. And it's pretty neat because there's a pretty good variety of enemies to fight and uh, you'll have your normal thug enemies that you just need to punch them to knock them out but then you'll have enemies that um, have blades and there's a special dodge technique that you need to use to 
dodge their blade attacks. Uh, there are armored enemies that you need to do a special combo to to actually knock out. There are enemies with shields that you need to do another special combo for to knock them down. Later in the game you discover um, enemies with electrified batons that you need to do another special combo to do. Uh, there's counter moves basically when you see an enemy with like these blue lightning bolts coming out of his head it means he's about to attack you and if you press triangle or Y depending on what console you're playing you can do a counter move and um, and it's very fluid it's a very fluid combat system if you learn how to use it uh, it's pretty neat and it, it's it flows well it's a pretty good combat system so that's pretty much what you're going to be doing when you're just fighting melee but then, of course, there's the whole stealth aspect of this game, and that's you're going to pr pretty much use that when there's a room that you need to clear out with a bunch of people armed with guns, because, uh, as you know, Batman doesn't really have any super superhuman abilities. He's just a regular human, and so if he gets shot, um, he gets hurt just like everyone else. So in this game, if, you get, if you're getting shot by an enemy, you're going to die pretty quickly if you don't get out of there, so... When there's a room full of enemies you need to clear with guns, you use the stealth gameplay. And there's a lot of different things that you can do in the stealth gameplay. And there's a lot of different ways to clear the room. You can either sneak up behind enemies and perform silent takedowns. You can swing off of, uh, you, it's usually like gargoyles or something like that in, on the ceiling of some of these rooms. And, you know, wait for enemies to... To become isolated and then you can swoop down and and get them you can do a a glide kick and knock them over and knock them out that way you can sit on top of a gargoyle and wait for an enemy to walk under you you can do what's called an inverted takedown where you actually swing down from the gargoyle and scoop up the enemy and hang him by his feet from the gargoyle um, there are different techniques you can use uh, different gadgets like you can upgrade and get a firearm disruptor where you can actually jam enemies guns for a short period of time and go attack them that way um, there's just all sorts of things there's grates in the floor sometimes where you can actually uh, dive into and you'll be underground and you can pop up out of these grates out of the floor and surprise uh, attack and take down enemies um, if you're actually get seen and you're being shot, you can throw a smoke pellet, uh, which will blind the enemies, they can't see you, you can get away that way, so, the stealth gameplay, there's a lot, you know, of different ways to play it, and the game usually gives you a good variety of ways to clear the room that you're in, uh, in a stealthy way, and it's pretty neat to be able to actually plan out your course of attack, and, uh, attack and, and clear out rooms in different ways, uh, based on, you know, how the room is laid out and things like that. And, you know, using your gadgets and things, it's pretty cool. So, that's basically your stealth gameplay. And then, of course, like I mentioned, you have a bunch of gadgets um, you that you can use in combat. You can use batarangs in combat to knock enemies over. You can, um, you know, use uh, your electric gun. And if there's like a generator or something nearby, you can actually shock it and it'll shock the enemies and knock the guns out of their hands. Um, later you unlock like ice grenades that you can throw at enemies and freeze them, uh, you know, onto the ground so they can't move anymore. So there's a lot to the combat. It's pretty cool. It's pretty complex, um, but it's not like convoluted and difficult to learn. It's easy to pick up and uh, it's, it's fun. So that's pretty much your combat. Um, there's actually a good amount of puzzle solving, I would say, in this game. Uh, a lot of times to figure out where you need to go, you need to figure out some kind of little mini puzzle, whether it's you know throwing a sonic batarang somewhere to hit a button that will you know open a door or um, you know sh shocking a door, having it open and then sliding under it. Um, so there's some pretty good puzzle solving elements in the game as well. Um, and then of course there are your collectibles, which just like Arkham Asylum are Riddler trophies. And they're not just normal collectibles like in any other game where you walk around, there's a collectible, you pick it up, 
uh, because true to the Riddler's nature, of course, he doesn't just hand you anything on a silver platter, you gotta earn it. And so, for the Riddler trophies, you need to um, solve many puzzles to uncover them, uh, or to recover them, I should say. And some of them are pretty simple, or maybe you just need to hack a door, and it'll open, you can get the trophy, or stand on a button and grab the trophy with a back claw. But sometimes it can get pretty complex to the point where you might need to throw a sonic batarang and control it and run it through live electricity and then up a flight of stairs through a vent down you know through a doorway and hit a fuse box overloading it and that'll open a door so the Riddler trophies are pretty neat they're a cool twist and spin on you know just your regular collectibles they give you a little something to do to earn the collectibles and you feel good most of the time when you pick them up you don't just feel like oh there's one pick it up you know so that's pretty neat and you know, the gameplay is is very good, and I think that uh, it was well done, it was well thought out, and very well made, you know, all the way around. So, between your combat, your stealth gameplay, your puzzle solving, uh, you know, your mini puzzle solving to get the trophies, and then with all the content between the main storyline and the the side quests, um, it's pretty it's pretty cool. Uh, and as far as the length, I'm going to have to walk out of the frame here for just a second because I actually forgot to check um, how long my playthrough actually was of this game. I could probably make a guess, but I want to, to give you an exact number, uh, or an exact time, I should say, of how long I, I actually played the game for. Okay, so... Pretty much from what I'm seeing, it took me about 16 hours. I played the game for about 16 hours, um, doing all of the main story and I think and like half of the side quests, like six of the side quests I did, and that took me about 16 hours. And um, so yeah, there's a lot of gameplay. And if I did all the side quests, maybe it would be 18 to 20 hours of gameplay. Okay, so pretty good uh, for length for this day and age, but. Um, that's basically, in a nutshell, your setting, your combat. So now let's talk. it's time to talk about the pros and the cons, things I liked about the game, things I didn't like about the game, and then give it a rating. So, things I like about the game. Um, a, a good deal of it. Okay, let's just say that. Pretty much, I liked almost everything in the game, from the plot, to the graphics, to the gameplay, uh, boss fights, all that good stuff. It was all good. Um... So it would probably be easier just to talk about the, the, the few complaints I do have with the game. And uh, it's, it's, di it's difficult for me to talk about things I don't like because it's the things that I don't like seem to be very specific um, to the situation. They're very situational things. It's, it, there's not a lot of complaints I have that are actually like running complaints that I have that was like a running problem throughout the game, you know what I mean? So it's difficult for me to say, but a couple of things that I did notice a few times during the game um, was sometimes like I would find the controls to be not accurate sometimes. Uh, there were times where it felt they felt kind of clunky. Um, the flying controls when you're actually gliding, if you're just gliding in a straight line, it's not really a problem, but if you try to steer yourself when you're gliding, the controls can become kind of wacky, and there was actually a part of this game where uh, you needed to do like the special flying maneuver of like dive bombing and raising yourself up and steering around things. If you touch anything, you actually died, and I died a few times on that just because the turning on the flying wasn't that precise, and uh, it it screwed me up. Uh, sometimes I would. I would think I'd land pretty silently behind an enemy to do like a silent takedown or something like that, and all of a sudden they would they would hear me anyway, which was kind of weird. Um, but again, like I said, a lot of the things that I didn't particularly like were, you know, very situational. And there was a lot of things I didn't like at the beginning of the game because I wasn't used to the game. I mean, I had never played Arkham Asylum. And uh, it's a game that you, you kind of need to get used to the gameplay a little bit to, to do well. And early in the game, I wasn't good at the gameplay, and I was getting frustrated with it a lot. But over time, as I learned, 
um, how to play and everything else, those frustrations kind of alleviated themselves. Um, so, and, you know, like I said, some situations like the boss fight with Mr. Freeze, uh, it, that was a little, that got frustrating a couple of times just because I couldn't do what I wanted to do and it seemed like there were some inconsistencies where sometimes one thing would work and the next time it didn't seem like it would work the same way or, you know, sometimes in the game maybe you needed to, like, you needed to blow something up or something like that to stun an enemy and it, the first time you do it, it would work at a certain range, and the next time you did it, it wouldn't work at that range. So, most of the frustrations I had seemed to be problems a lot of times with consistency, where one time you could do something and it would be fine, and the next time you did it and it wouldn't work the same way, and you're like, why not, you know? Um, but a couple of instances I can point to directly were, one, the most frustrated I ever got in this game was pretty early on when I was in this room, um, with, you know, everybody had guns and they had just introduced, like, th thermal goggles. They had thermal goggles on and so you couldn't hide up in the rafters on gargoyles because the people with the, the thermal binoculars would see you. And so you had to find a way to clear the room by basically staying ground level and staying hidden from them. And, uh... Basically, it took a while, okay, to clear the room, because you couldn't go up top. You had to do everything kind of ground level. There was a good amount of enemies. So I would say it probably took you around five minutes, maybe even a little more, to clear out the enemies in the room. Well, what happened was toward the end, when I had most of the enemies cleared out, they would go and take a hostage, and you were supposed to, obviously, knock out the guy who, who took the hostage uh, without him seeing you or he killed the hostage. And... The game, he was on like a balcony, and the game would have him turn around on the balcony at certain intervals. He would just keep turning, and the first time I tried to take him out, he was looking the other way. I came behind him, and he turned around and saw me and killed the hostage, which was fine. But the problem was, was that the checkpoint, there was no checkpoint when they took the hostage. The checkpoint was back at the beginning of the room, and you had to redo basically five minutes of gameplay over and over and over again each time you screwed up and I got I screwed it up a couple of times like one time I said okay well I'll come at him sideways because he only turns left and right you know if I come at him sideways so I, I came at him sideways and I went to do a glide kick and unfortunately I landed right next to him but I hit square anyway to punch him and he killed the hostage anyway the game never let me punch him and I had to keep redoing it and it got to the point where I was getting really frustrated, but one time I did it, and I took out everybody, and they never took a hostage. So I cleared it. It was very weird. Um, so that was pretty strange, and I think that's one of the big complaints I do have about the game, is that you cannot save whenever you want in the game. And that's a big flaw from Rocksteady, because if you're going to make an open world game, you've got to have the ability to save whenever you want to, because checkpoints are too inconsistent, and in an open world game where you need where you can go around and do whatever you want and especially a game like this which is stealth based which a lot of times can be trial and error where sometimes one clearing out a room one way doesn't work and you know you want to try a different way but you may have cleared out half the enemies but unfortunately because you can't save when you want to you have to go back and clear out the whole room again and it's very frustrating and time consuming and I think that's a big fault in the game. I think they needed to put in the ability to save when you wanted to in this style of game, okay? If it was going to have checkpoints, then they should have made it more linear. That's the way I feel about it. Um, and uh, another thing that was kind of weird was there was a couple of side quests that I couldn't finish because the game wouldn't tell you where to go to, to finish the side quests. It was very weird. It was like a couple of the side quests... Um, it would start and you go investigate something and it would say you need to find more leads to continue the case But the game doesn't tell you where the leads are and that was for like two of the side quests and you're like How does it you know and right now? I still don't know. I don't know how to find those leads I mean do they expect you to go all over the city and just happen upon the leads to continue the side quest quest? I don't know, but I couldn't finish the side quest because I didn't know where to go the game doesn't tell you where the next lead is located and it's weird. For some side quests, it tells you exactly where to go to finish it. Some of them, they don't. And, I don't know, it's pretty weird. 
and uh, I think it should be self-explanatory to finish side quests. But one important thing I did leave out of the gameplay is actually the ability to go into detective mode. And you actually spend a good amount of the time in detective mode, and when you do that, it's basically like a scanning mode for Batman, and when he does that, he can basically see where he is in a new way. And basically, you can see, you can use it to scout enemies, because you can see them like through walls and stuff, because it reads their skeleton, and you can see, you know, if they're armed, if they're unarmed, uh, if they're nervous or calm, meaning if they're alert, alerted to you or not. Um, in detective mode, you can actually see walls that are weak that you can blow up with explosive gel, and sometimes there'll be Riddler trophies hidden behind there. Sometimes um, they're strategic. Sometimes if you blow up a wall, you can get to a place to attack enemies from a new area. Um, you can <clears throat> you need to go in detective mode sometimes to follow blood trails to do detective work and things like that to trace a bullet trajectory. So, detective mode is pretty cool and unique, and you spend a lot of time in it actually scanning, and you use it a lot to plan out your route of attack. If the enemies are armed, if they're unarmed, it changes how you uh, may attack or try to clear the area. So, detective mode is a big part of the gameplay. So, okay, I've pretty much said everything that I needed to say here, uh, and now it's time to get down to a score. And... I feel like, like I said, Batman Arkham City, one of the best games of 2011. There's no question about that. Extremely well made. It's very, very true to the, to the comic books, each villain. It's an amazing job by Rocksteady of really researching the Batman universe, getting a collection of all these supervillains together, making them look really good. Uh, the voice acting is right on par. They have a lot of great voice actors. They have Mark Hamill as the Joker, who pretty much is widely considered the voice of the Joker. He did the animated series, Voice of the Joker. He does it in this game. I believe the man who voices Batman also was the voice of Batman in that in the animated series. Nolan North actually does the voice acting for Penguin, which I never would have guessed because he's an amazing voice actor and his voice sounds nothing like Nathan Drake or, you know, Desmond Miles or anything like that. I would have never known had I not um, read that. So that's very good. It's just a very, very well-made game. and it, it, it makes you wish that Rocksteady would buy the Marvel license from Activision and actually give this kind of treatment to Marvel games as well, which would be just sweet if they had Spider-Man games, X-Men games that were uh, worth something other than the crap that Activision continually puts out. So well-made game. There are some minor complaints, like I said, that I do have with the game. It's not a perfect game. I don't think that it that it, uh, it just screams above all else game of the year. I don't think it, it's, it's elevated to that height. It's certainly a game of the year contender, but I don't think that it's one that's just like screams, this is game of the year. You know, it's a great game, um, but it's not a perfect game, uh, but certainly a good one. So my score for Batman Arkham City, I'm going to give Arkham City a 9 out of 10. Very good game. I had a lot of fun with it. I hope that they continue to make games like this. Um, maybe they'll branch out and make other games. Maybe they'll make a Superman game or something like that, which would be cool. We'll see. But Arkham City, very good game. One of the best of 2011. Really glad I decided to play it uh, before I started making my top 10 games of the year video. And if you're looking for a really good game to play, if you're a Batman fan or just a fan of games in general, then I think Arkham City is going to be a great game. Uh, play for you and I think that you're going to really enjoy it. All right. So that's my game review of Batman Arkham City. I hope you enjoyed it. Again, as always, if you're interested, you can always check out my playthrough of Batman Arkham City uh, for your viewing pleasure to see the gameplay that I'm basing this review off of and uh, hope you enjoyed it. So I'm Voodoo51292 and as always, I'll see you next time with another one of my honest and thorough game reviews.